as the homeowner or owner of the place, highway patrol, sheriff's, sheriff's department, excuse me. Um, wherever they received that call, that was the record that, that was caught. Um, there was no no errors on, on that side at all. So, other than that, I had nothing else to add. Mr. Stevens, do you have anything to No, I don't, I, I don't have anything to add. Anything to add? Any, anything else? I think. Any suggestions, Walter? Why before is Walter still here? He's got a ball game, I know. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> anything else to add, Walter? This discussion in open forum while we're here. I think Robbie. If everything goes as Robbie has said, it's going to be smooth sailing. That one, that's not the way it's been for the last couple of years. Oh, we'll go go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to, Mr. Beal is our liaison. We'll challenge you. Keep up with uh, Chair's Holland and, and make sure this happens. I know. Could have been accomplished. Could have been accomplished easily. Coordinate the activities. My office. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cox, do you have something to yes. add? No, brother. I want to quote Ronnie Haven tonight. I do wish that before Robbie had made some statements that he had had all of his information correct before he accuses me of lying and telling. Uh, St stories with about Drake's. Drake's towing did not show up at that meeting from what they told me because they were showing their house. And the fact that he stands here tonight and accused me of lying, I don't appreciate that either. If he's got proof to back up this, just like I, there's all kinds of accusations that I could make, but I don't have proof for it. If he's going to call me a liar, I want him to have the proof to back it up too. He's called me a liar. I know some of these officers up here, and I don't think any one of them can ever say that whenever I was out at a scene they were working where I towed a vehicle, that I was ever disrespectful to any of them. And I don't appreciate him indicating or alluding to the fact that I was. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, I think we need to move on. Uh, Mr. Hunter said if this is an acceptable plan, it sounds reasonable to me that uh, we'd be able to, to uh, get that report back from the sheriff through our our liaison, so if everybody's uh, comfortable with that, we'll, we'll drive on. Okay, Jim. Um, and this is back to the public comment, um, other than the uh, towing issue. Austin Brooks, is Austin here? Hey, Austin. Uh, I'm Austin Brooks, um, I'm a resident of Mason County. Give, give them just, I think we have some of our folks leaving. We expect you to give them just a second to leave. Uh, we appreciate you guys here. Uh, <coughs> appreciate your time. So, hey, go ahead, My name is Austin Brooks. I'm a resident of Maple County. Um, I live in 1470 Dillard Road up in Highlands. And I'm a speaker on the behalf of Dr. Bill McClarney tonight, who's been a resident for 28 years and has worked with many of the nonprofits and uh, conservation practices. <clears throat> I would like to make a very general statement about the planning board, the idea of regulation, the environment, the economy, property rights, the proper role of government, and a whole lot of other things. I'm trying to understand why, if we all really care about this place, things have gotten so ugly. I'll start with the concept of regulation. There seems to be an idea in some circles that members of the planning board enjoy imposing regulations. <coughs> if there is such a person, someone who gets pleasure out of regulating or being regulated, I don't want to know him and I don't want him on a county advisory board. Yet anyone will admit there is some need for regulation. The only alternative is total anarchy and that this is a legitimate function of government. The discussion has to be about individual regulations, not the concept. It's not about anarchy versus dictatorship. It's about what's best for all of us. In a document about the huge flood which swept through Macon County in 1970, I learned that at the time, the town of Franklin still discharged raw sewage to the Little Tennessee River at several points. <coughs> the solution was regulatory, imposed by the Federal Clean Water Act of 1972. I'm sure there was grumbling at that time, but does anyone want to undo that body of regulation? With growth comes the need for more regulation. If you move to Atlanta, you assume you're not going to keep a goat in your yard or let your dog run loose. If your goal is to minimize regulation, you should think hard about the ongoing urbanization of this county. 
That may constitute a dilemma to which nobody has all the answers. But I think the planning board is to be applauded for trying to get ahead of the curve with suggestions for preventive action. You may disagree with some of their conclusions, but it is absolutely wrong to attribute their actions to any motive other than a concern for our welfare as a community, which certainly includes trying to keep something of our rural character. All of this is wrapped up in a larger debate, which is going on nationally, even worldwide. It won't be resolved in Macon County, but we owe it to ourselves to think about it. I refer to the question of what is the proper role of the economy in regulating our daily lives. There is a point of view that the economy, left alone, will fix everything. If this viewpoint had prevailed in the 1970s, might not we still be discharging untreated sewage and industrial waste into the Little Tennessee River? How much time and money was wasted at that time in trying to avoid responsibility for the public good through regulation of water pollution? Please remember, the members of the planning board live and work in the same economy as the rest of us. Their responsibility is to make recommendations about land use planning, which, unless you think, unres unless you think unrestrained e economic growth is a panacea. In the current climate of economic fear, it's perhaps understandable if we regress. Understandable, but not justifiable. We need to encourage the commissioners, the planning board, and all others involved to continue to have the courage to balance the myriad concerns with which they are presented. Not, all, not allow themselves to be intimidated by any interest group and plan for a future making county in which we all can take pride in. Thank you, Austin, very much. Uh, James Birch. Yeah, I just want to say a few, uh, a few words. Uh, I, I grew up here in Macon County, and I first started seeing when real estate started moving into the Appalachian Mountains, and what a disaster it was, uh, especially for low income and, and our kids and grandkids. But the steep slope. Uh, development or the plan for that is the best thing you could ever have because I worked for the Forest Service government 34 years and the road is even clever 15% it's getting steep. Can you imagine a road that's 30 and 40 and 50 percent? And what happened was years ago these these uh, people brought up these huge tracts of land and they surveyed them out from the bottom to the top and it was real narrow. And a lot of them did not, not did not have enough room to put even a switch back in. When you got a road going straight up a narrow lot, you ain't got no they ain't no choice but that water to go straight down. And I know there's some logs right above me up, up above me right now. And if I don't buy them just to save that, my watershed, my spring and my water down below can be can be uh, taken out. And there's nowhere to build on that just because um, that's just cause it's for sale or cause it's there does not mean that it can be built on. When you break that root system, there's nowhere for that water to go anymore. And and this county is based on the, the interest of a, a few small interest groups, the main one being real estate. <coughs> and like I said, I'm totally against it. I don't think it's constitutional. I don't think it's, it's where capitalism, where greed went wrong and it allowed for a monopoly and for something to open up. In my opinion, the only way it'll ever work out in between 1995 and 2005, if you took a chart and showed where land started going up, it went like this. And then from 1995 to 2005, it went off the charts. Nothing could sustain it. Who was being a part of it? Nobody, and, and it collapsed. And, uh, and to me, that's the reason our economy's in the mess it is now on account of real estate. And the National Board of Realtors and the Maple Board of Realtors or whoever, they're wanting this big road to get back on again and pick up where it left off. That was where the mess, that's where we got into the mess to start with. Nobody was a part of it but the 1% retired people moving in here. And it priced itself out to where the people that grew up here and the native people cannot have access to their own land anymore. <coughs> and you can go back and some people say, well, it's their own fault for selling their land off. No, it wasn't because when you have the buyer and the seller, and you didn't have a third party, but you can't have real estate and have a third party and have a monopoly the way it is, and you just deal with a few percent people. And, and, and after World War II, 
men, men for the first time, families left the country and went to the cities during the uh, 60s and 70s and well, later than that, you had a, a mass migration of these people coming back to the country, whereas in before they left the country and went to the cities. And it disrupted everything and caused the market there that they were a part of and they were retiring, building their homes, except for maybe some younger people from Atlanta or Florida. But most of it dealt with the older generation that had that wealth, and you'll never have that kind of wealth again that that World War II boom generation had. And we couldn't compete with that. And I, I, I guess I can say the only thing we can do right now is, is to make a push, and you never hear no politicians politicking on this, is to make real estate illegal and, and let it go back between the buyer and the seller. Because there's nothing constitutional about it right now. Nobody's a part of it, except they want about a few percent people. I, I, I don't know what else to say. And this steep slope development, it, some people say it's not, it's not your, I, I get to do with my land what I want to, but it's another thing when they build in above you and put a road in above you and it washes you down on you and takes you out. And uh, you don't have no say so in it, and that's the way it's been. And Diamond Falls is one example of it on the head of Dills Creek, and that's where I grew up. My, our creek's running, it'll never be the same again because these ordinances was not put in place years ago, and this thing's been kicked around for 50 years now, or whatever time the Sue Walter had said, and nothing being done. And uh, and uh, those houses back in there, you ought to drive back in there and see that. You ought to see the roads. That's just one of them. And I had seen Wildflower. That's another one I heard was a disaster. And the greed, it was the greed that set in over, there was nothing that wasn't selling a few years ago and everything collapsed on account of it. And some of you on the board right here are in building, but that doesn't mean you can't still build, you just gotta build in the right way. And there's some pieces of land that you just can't build on. It's too steep. It's, it, our water is precious and, and it's taking out our water down below. And our water, and water will never be pure again like it used to be. That's about all. Thank you, James. Yeah, we appreciate your time. Uh, next, we have Mr. Uh, we have Mr. Bruce Oliver. Bruce. <coughs> yes, thank you. Uh, please pardon me. I had no intention of speaking today, but I just have some things that I, I feel like I should say. Unfortunately, I have not even cleared this with my wife, so I'll have to answer, oh, answer that later. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, but there are a few things I would like to say. In October of 2010, we purchased a lot at Diamond Falls. Uh, we, uh, we decided that we would build a house there and retire here because we like this area. And uh, we have no kids, we, we, we're just what you want. We have no kids in school, so we don't take up the tax money. We just, we're just here to spend our retirement money. But then what happened? We were promised when we bought this property, four things, aside from the fact that the property would be buildable and a lot of the lots were not. But ours was. We were promised use of the clubhouse, which has been locked for most of the time we have had the, the lot. We have been unable to get in there. Off and on, we can't get in. The swimming pool stayed locked for the entire summer, and of course, had, didn't even have a chair to sit on if you ever got in, but you couldn't. So no one, no one was able to use any of this. Um, now, let's take the other things besides that, the, the more important things. The water. Water was delayed for approximately a year. Over and over, there was one delay after another. Our contractor had to put in tiles without water into our house. Can you imagine this? I mean, and this all had to be brought. Electricity was the next thing. It too was delayed for approximately a year. Our contractor had to use generators for every bit of the electricity, for, all, for everything, 
it upped the cost of our house by at least $30,000. And in the contractor, we think, it had done an excellent job. And he won't make any money on it for his excellent job. It's all gone because of this incompetency on, on the part of the people from whom we bought the property. Or I won't say necessarily incompetency or whatever, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, now the roads. We were told all the roads would be paved. I asked that day when the paving would begin, and I was told, quote, pretty much right now. Then <coughs> two, three months later, I was told winter's coming on. We won't be able to do any paving until the spring. Then there were various other excuses, and this this fall, the same thing. We can't pave until spring because winter's coming on. Same thing. Uh, then we had uh, a, um, I'm sorry, I'm a bit disorganized. Uh, we were told on, on the roads, finally we were told later that Quote, they had decided, or, well, I won't quote, maybe I'm paraphrasing, I don't know. But they had decided not to pave. They had decided instead to just keep the roads well graveled, but they haven't been well graveled. Most of the time, there's no gravel on there either. And certainly no paving. There's a truck that's been parked for six months uh, about, uh, I don't know why it's there, but it's a, I don't know who's paying for this. Uh, we, we're still paying dues for uh, upkeep on this thing. Homeowners, I mean, homeowners pay, pay so much, I don't know what my wife handles that. But we pay it, and, and I think it just goes in somebody's pocket because almost nothing is done. A few little things, but probably a tenth of it is spent and the rest of it is pocketed. Um, I would like to say the... Uh, we had a, um, um, I am personally a strong believer in limited government. I do not think government belongs in a lot of things that, that government gets into. But there is one thing that I heard one time was the, the most proper function of government, and that is to prevent force and fraud. Now, I don't know, I don't contend fraud has occurred because I don't know the legal definition of fraud and I don't wish to make a, an accusation I can't back up. But it seems like to me it certainly borders on it if it's not. And it goes on and on with no sign of these promises ever being filled. Finally, we got water. Finally, we got electricity. Although we had some problem with the water, there's a big hole in our driveway which was left that way. And in fact, we mentioned they were asked one time, we were asked if uh, this, uh, by the Black Bear Paving Company that was supposed to do this, some, some man that was with them, uh, Mr. L.C. Jones, I believe, had asked my wife if, uh, how the, how the, how the, if, if, if uh, needed any gravel on our road. And I asked, uh, she said, well, I mean, you, you know, we, 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 on our driveway, we don't, we don't have any much, but we don't really, you know. He said, well, I, he said, well, I'll, uh, I'm going to be putting some gravel out there. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave some on there. And so he said, I'll put some on there. In, what, in fact, what happened was the, that, in fact, what happened is on the main road, on the road that leads out of there, about a quarter of a mile from the house, gravel was known. And we cut a bill for $370. We wrote a, cert a certified letter to Black Bear Paving Company to, to uh, protest this and say we had no intention of paying it and they knew what they could do with it. The letter set certified came back marked refused. It was not, uh, it was never open. We still had it. But at any rate, uh, if Government needs to protect against force and fraud. I don't know what fraud is, as I said. I don't know the legal definition. You decide. <coughs>
but I wanted to tell you some of what has happened to us. And I feel like that we have some of the better deals because our lot at least was buildable. A lot of the lots were not. Thank, thank you, Mr. Robert. Sure. Very much. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those things you mentioned, you know, certainly probably aren't, aren't under our How jurisdiction. I wouldn't. They, might not they, they should be under yours if they're not. Well, if, if I don't know about all this matter. But it kind of reminds me of a song. What's your name? What's your we name, sir? Folks, huh? What's your name, sir? My name is Floyd Cruz. Hey, Mr. Cruz, and you want to speak to the board, sir? I said you want to speak to the board about a matter. I can't sir. speak now. No, you can. That's fine. We just want to recognize you. I didn't have you on the list uh, to speak, but that's fine. We'll let you do that. I want to know if I could say something? Yes, sir. Go right here. It ain't the first time I've ever been rejected for gospel. No, you. No, you can't. No, you can't. I'm saying yes. Experience. Please speak. Please speak. I just didn't have you on the list to recognize you. You didn't have me on the list. Correct. You're good. Though. Go right ahead. There used to be a song that we heard years ago. Went something like this: Move over, little dog, or the big dogs are moving in. But with the best interpretation of that is this. Move over, redneck. The white collars are moving in. <coughs> That's the way it is in most cases in the world today. There's one scripture that I think about. The scripture says, you'll have the poor with you always. And then there's another scripture that goes along with that. The rich will oppress the poor. And usually the people that's in authority in politics and in religion and everything else, they're rich. And the reason they get elected is everything, uh, they have enough money to pay for a lot of negative ads and everything. And usually the rich usually get in authority. Well, this is what it comes to. The majority may not always rule but they're not always right. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, I'd like to go back to Mr. Oliver, Mr. Turner, if that's okay if we could address that. Uh, I'd like to ask Derek. Can I say something? No, hang on just a second. I'd like to recognize Derek uh, about our subdivision ordinance. Because yeah, I mean, I've spilled that off. First of all, we've worked extensively in the planning office, and it's been a pleasure working with the Olivers and the developers at Diamond Falls. Who are the developers at Diamond Falls? Uh, LC Shirley, Bo Shirley Boifo and Mr. LC Jones is her agent. Who's that? I know LC. Yeah, Mr. LC. Who he works as her agent. Shirley, Shirley Waffle. Shirley Waffle. She's not here. She's from Atlanta. <coughs> she's the. <coughs> she's not going to own like ten million dollars of property. No. She is. No. She, I Make think. Yeah. I think. I mean. I don't, I'm not sure. Of her, I'm not sure of her. Uh, Make it George. Okay. But with the subdivision ordinance, and I've, I've spoke to this at the planning board meeting before. What the subdivision ordinance does is it establishes at its base a minimum standards that all subdivisions that are constructed in Macon County must abide by before that we can approve the plat to be recorded in the Register of Deeds Office. When somebody is buying in a subdivision, if it is unrecorded at the time, then there's really, that person is assuming a certain degree of risk in purchasing that subdivision. In this instance in particular, what happened, The it was in the preliminary stages, in other words, the land, once the land is subdivided, then that's when they submit a preliminary plat to the planning department. We can approve that preliminary plat that authorizes them to go ahead and begin making improvements. So in this case, they bought a lot in phase two that was in the preliminary phase. In other words, the planning department has looked at it and said, you can begin. Now before a final plat can be approved, there has to be all the improvements made. And the improvements are not necessarily paved roads they're, it's minimum standard. So gravel roads will work for the subdivision ordinance. What we're looking at is road widths, surface on the roads, whether it be gravel or paved, road grades, things of that nature. Homeowners Association being, being established, 
and referenced to take care of the maintenance agreement. So those are the things that the subdivision ordinance kind of looks at. We, we have no way of knowing what was promised to the purchasers by the realtors or whoever they were told was that the roads were going to be paved or <coughs> anything of that nature. We have no way of seeing to that. But in this case, because the, these final improvements were, going to, were not going to be made before the final plat could be approved, a bond was issued. In other words, the bond was issued to say if these improvements are not met before the final plat is recorded, that Macon County, you have an avenue of ensuring that these improvements are met in the event that the owners default or something happens. You have this much money. We worked with the development, and as we were going through it and they were making these improvements, the planning department realized that this bond wasn't sufficient enough to cover the cost that was needed to complete the work that was still left to do. So we worked with our attorney, with the attorney representing the development group, and we got on a common ground and we got an increased bond. And actually that bond is still on that phase, the new bond that has just been implemented. And it's for like, it, it the bond more than doubles, so we have more than enough funds to, to cover that <coughs> project in the event that it goes into fall. And I don't see that happening. Um, I see it fin getting finished and, and, and speaking with the developer, these promises that, that were made will be fulfilled in the spring when weather is uh, more conducive to paving. But in the meantime, as for a safety net, which the subdivision owners does create, the people out there in phase two can have a safety net that if this final plot, if this final, if these final improvements are not made, then Macon County has the avenue to go in there and make these improvements as necessary. So there is that safety net there, but we've, like I say, we've worked with the development group. They've been great to work with, and they've they've done everything we've asked them to do. We've asked them to bring certain roads into standards that were not up to standards. They they did that. They did, went into discussions with us, and they came back and gave us a larger bond. That we, everyone felt more comfortable with, so they worked with us in that aspect. So there's nothing that's been done thus far that I can see that that would be anything to, to raise an eyebrow. At. Have so you met with Oliver? Yes, sir. Have you met with Mr. Dan Kelly? No, sir. That was the first time I've ever heard of Mr. Dan Kelly. He's also a guy who followed up there. Okay. Uh, the Olivers, the reason I met with the Olivers is because they came to a planning board meeting and voiced these concerns. And we, we addressed that at that time, and I kept in contact with the Olivers throughout the whole process as we were getting this new bond in this I can we'll get in touch with Mr. Kelly if you'd like. When did he, is that email new? Fairly that recently? email was, uh, uh, no, oh, two, days, two days or two days. Oh, good. did he send it? He sent it, he sent some questions. I think Al Stanley <coughs> brought this in, but it is more on the same lines as Mr. Oliver just, okay. Yeah, yeah. And just see if there's anything, and you can explain to, to all of us, right. and the Oliver's like you can explain to him, but you work with the developer, the developer seems to be doing what, it, what he's supposed to. We have increased the bond amount. Yes, sir. Which we did do. The bond amount is not for all the roads. Yes, the bond the bond, the bond, the bond amount covers everything in phase two that, that's left to do, and that's the roads, that the hydro seating, the uh, the surfacing of the roads, the water through phase yes, two. Yes, sir. But in order to leave, we're in phase two. But in order to leave phase two, we have to go through phase one. We were told that road would be paved. Right. It and wasn't touched. Yes, sir. Sort of, and and it won't be. Maybe some latitude. Right. We've obviously been pretty. Uh, Everyone was told that. I think if you'll have a discussion between you two, you need to do that. Okay. Uh, aside from here, okay. we appreciate the comments. But uh, if uh, Derek, could you could you follow up with these folks? And yes, sir. And report back to the board Absolutely. about that since we did we were involved in the bond. So, Mr. Hall, we are aware of that, and uh, we appreciate <coughs> Derek will continue to work with you on that. Thank you for your comments. Any? Nope. We've got to, we have two more. Mr. Jimmy Goodman. If you want to give, I don't know if Jimmy's, Jimmy's, I need to go through the, the list. Is it? That's Jimmy's right behind you. Jimmy's right behind you. We'll get to you. We've got Lonnie Cruz, then we'll add you to the list. 
Mr. Chairman, I was coming out in the hall and I was, going, I was going to leave here. I didn't really want to say anything else. But I sit and watched you guys banter back and forth about what was right about talking about fellow citizens, and especially on the planet. Okay. I was uh, nominated back to the planning board, and I love serving on the planning board, and I love all the people that I work with, and I try my best to do the job honorably as much as I know how. But during the time that I was being reappointed to that planning board, there were special meetings called, and my name was drugged through the mud. And I ask y'all tonight to please pass the term limits and get the politics out of it. There are a lot of good people in this county that want to serve on that planning board that have never got a chance. And I think it's because of politics. And I appreciate you letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this uh, in regards to that. We talk about term limits, talk about time of service and that kind of thing. And I think it helped all of you guys to understand that, that at least, well, this whole board is fairly new. Mr. Bill's longest served, I think he's in the second term. Mr. Cuffers has served three years. Uh, I have served about a year. Mr. Haven has served just a shade over a year. And Mr. Tate has served a month or two, two months. So a lot of this, these things that happen to the planning board and all that, we're, we're having to learn about. We weren't here. And, and you know, so at least. Uh, I just ask you to take the politics out of it. I understand, and I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, okay, uh, we have Lonnie Cruz. Is Lonnie here? say they, they want an honest politician, a politician who cares about the people and fights for the small man. But when they got it in front of them, they don't even recognize it. When we moved here, me and my family were homeless. We didn't have a place to go. I met Ron Haven. Ron, without even asking for anything or anything, he put us up for almost a month for free. He's done nothing but be honest to us the whole time we've been here. And I've seen him do this not just for us, but for many other people. Man, you don't know about, about Ron. <coughs> you know, you got, you got every, I believe in the term limits. That should go for any form of government, no matter where you're at, whether it be a high or lower level, because it gives a fair and honest way for society to view everything. Um, as far as Mr. Bill, you said that Ron was wrong for calling up Mr. Pinnell and saying that he shouldn't have done that. Well, if Ron believes that, then the Constitution gives us the right of free speech and also the right to overthrow a government at any time that we think it's not for the people. <coughs> so you don't overthrow the government? <laughs> well, that's a form of government. And it's, it is a form not of speech. I'm making any call somebody to dictate about a form of government, in my opinion. We just dipped on that. Let's, well, no, let's I keep term limits would be a form of dictatorship. If, 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 I mean, if you want to do something with the committee, make a committee that oversees all the other committees that does investigations and who has personal interest in what. That's what I would think. I mean, that would, that would be a small thing. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Lonnie. Thank you. I believe we had one more. Was it, was it Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones. Let me get, is it L.C.? Yeah, L.C. Jones. Yeah, uh, I want to say something on behalf of Shirley Walpole that owns Diamond Falls. Uh, there's some accusations made here of a fraud. Uh, there's no fraud. There is a homeowners association that's run out of a group from Charlotte. It's online. There's a key at the clubhouse all the time this Saturday for all the homeowners to go in and out. The pool's been open all year. I mean, not, it, ain't, it ain't now, but it was open last year. They had the pool company in town services the pool and the accusations that they couldn't get into the clubhouse, that's false. And and as far as uh, the roads being paved, we paved the we we surely did not make a commitment to pave the road on the first section. She made a commit commitment to pave the road on phase two, which Derek was talking about. She did not make that commitment. There were some commitments made by 
some real estate people that were selling property that all the roads that, that would be made that would be paid. Shirley plans on paving things as things progress, but she did not make no commitments or put nothing in writing that all the all the roads on phase one that would be paid. And I just want to set that record clear. And then the, the Kelly thing, I think I heard something about that today. Uh, he, when he bought his lot, and I'm not for sure what the email says, but when he bought his lot, there was a uh, thing, uh, there was a commitment in there for the developer to grade the lot out, which the developer did. They come in and graded the lot out. They accepted the grading that was on the lot. The builder went to build the house. Now he's got the house built, and there's a problem with the lot that was graded that they accepted. Now they're coming back after the developer, Shirley, and say that she's got to go back and redo stuff that she already done one time. Just answer some of those questions. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jones. That, that is uh, all the folks I had signed up for public comment. And uh, we've got through three of about uh, 14 items. Again, so, I made it clear. I, I, I don't know what the definition of fraud is, <laughs> and so I did not say that there was fraud committed but in right. any way. If, uh, I don't know the definition of it. Guys, need to break as much as I do. We've been, we've been sitting here for three and a half hours. Those 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 Let me get yeah, we'll close the public comment period and we recess. We'll take a short break for about 15 minutes. I reckon I'll get that back.